I'm Mikey Romano. Welcome back to the Eco Bus, part of Greensboro Parks and Recreation. Today, we're going to talk about lakes, how to have fun on them, how to stay safe on them, and maybe some of the things that live in them. Now that we're enjoying the warm weather, it's a lot of fun to go out and enjoy yourself at the lakes, but you want to be safe too. Greensboro has three reservoir lakes, Lake Brant, Lake Higgins, and Lake Townsend. Each lake is a little bit special and has its own personality. These lakes are very, very important because not only do we get our drinking water from them, but they also a lot of habitats for wildlife as well. Remember these supplies from our first episode? These are pretty much standard issue. Whenever you go outdoor adventuring, you want to bring some of this stuff with you. But for today, we need one more special item. Whenever you're going to do any kind of water activity, you always want one important item your PFD, your personal flotation device. This is going to be incredibly important on the event that you go into the water. It'll keep you afloat until you can get back in your boat, over to shore, or a rescue comes to pick you up. Not only is it very important, it's the law. When you're out on our legs, you need to wear your PFD. Now, when you're looking at your PFD, you always want to make sure the buckles are in good repair, the straps aren't frayed, and when you try it on and tighten it, you want to make sure it fits properly. You shouldn't be able to pop right out of it. You pop right out of it, it's not going to do you any good if you go in the water. While there's lots of recreational activities available at our lakes, swimming is unfortunately not one of them. If we allowed swimming at the lakes, a lot more treatment would be needed to make it safe for drinking. We all like our drinking water as pure and clean as possible. You'll notice all the natural areas surrounding the lakes, they act like filters. These buffer zones basically catch all the debris, all the runoff that would come from houses, streets, driveways, that kind of thing. When it rains, everything would run from those areas into our lakes. But all the natural areas we have around, all those buffers, all those filters, basically clean the water, catching all that extra runoff and debris before it hits our drinking water. Just about all of our lake recreational activities involve boating of some kind. Kayaks, paddle boards, sailboats, fishing boats, it's all about being on the water. And remember, the most important thing that you've got to bring when you're on the water, don't forget your PFD. This color brings out my eyes better. So as long as we're talking about recreation on the lake, boating, that kind of thing, there's a little bit of a serious subject we wanted to discuss, something called hydrilla. Hydrilla is an incredibly invasive plant species that will take over water bodies, choke out waterways, mess up things for wildlife, and basically destroy an entire ecosystem, unfortunately. Now, hydrilla can be transferred with just a tiny little fragment stuck to your boat from going to one body of water to the next. So what you want to do whenever you take a kayak out, a fishing boat, anything like that, you want to hose it off right as soon as you get it out of the water in the exact place that you take it out. Hose it off, make sure your propellers are clean, make sure the underside of the boat is clean, empty your bilge water, make sure there's nothing in there, and always remember that, aside from boating, you don't want to ever transfer plants from one lake or one river to another body of water, because you don't know what it can be and what kind of detriment it can turn into. Our lakes are full of fish, and a lot of people really enjoy fishing for them. Everybody wants to try and catch the big one. So whether you're out here casting off the pier or in a fishing boat, remember to bring your fishing license. If you don't have one, stop over to our lake offices. Our staff can help you. Being in the lake is always fun, whether you're fishing from pier or having a picnic out. Just remember, when you're all done, make sure all your trash goes with you. Lakes are living, breathing ecosystems, not just bodies of water. If we take care of them, they'll take care of us.
As amazing as the lakes are, you're not the only ones who enjoy them. A lot of the times you'll see some fine feathered friends here, mainly geese. Geese are great, they're fun to look at, they're really amazing. But you know what? They don't have the best temperament, so you don't want to get too close to them. Also, please don't feed them. Wild animals aren't made to eat the same foods we do, and as much as they might like it, it's not good for them. I eat way too much macaroni and cheese. I love it, it's delicious, it's not good for me. The thing is, if you feed them, not only do you hurt the animal, but when it goes through that animal into the ecosystem, it can hurt the lake and the ecosystem around them. So there's plenty of food around here, let them eat their own thing, and just enjoy them from afar. Hey Mikey, let's go! That's Crystal, she's awesome. She's gonna be our captain today. You guys ready for a ride? So Captain Crystal has us on the water on um, beautiful Lake Brant today. We're gonna do a little traveling around, check out some coves, some of the different areas around the lake to see if we can find some cool wildlife, maybe some fun turtles, maybe some birds, who knows what we'll see. So what we're looking at right now are a species of aquatic turtle. From this distance, it looks like they are yellow-bellied sliders, one of the more common aquatic turtles to this area. These guys are really, really cool. They'll come out, uh, especially in the earlier morning, mid part of the day when it's nice and sunny out, and they'll lay on rocks and logs that come out of the water and dry out, and then they'll bask in the sun for a while to kind of get their body temperature up. So the aquatic turtles in our native lakes here have a little bit of a problem with an invasive species. Invasive species are animals that don't normally occur in the area but have been introduced through accidents, through people releasing them, through lots of different means. And these invasive species can take over, eat up all the food, drive the other animals out. They're generally a detriment to the environment. So currently what we're dealing with is something called a red-eared slider. Now, she's adorable, she's cute, but she's a big problem for our native species, okay? So this girl actually is the same kind of turtle that you will find at the beach. The little baby turtles you can buy that they fib and say you can live in that little tiny tank and not outgrow it. That's a big fib. What's happening is the turtle is stunting and becoming unhealthy and probably going to expire a little early. They actually need a really large tank filtration, the right kind of lighting. To buy a baby turtle and properly house it for its entire life, you will spend a couple of hundred dollars and eventually you'll need something akin to a pond or a horse trough in your home because this is still a small one. Females can get a big dinner plate size. The male's a little smaller. A lot of people will get these guys and once they get too big or too problematic, they don't want them. But zoos, pet stores, collectors, they are over full. So people will just drop them in the lakes and think that they're doing a good job to let them free. But even though it sounds nice to the turtle, they're not made to be in the wild in this area because they were bred in captivity for the pet industry. And even if they survive, they're destroying our native wildlife, unfortunately. So you never ever want to let them go. This girl right here is a rescue. Somebody had her as a pet, didn't want to take care of her anymore, too much trouble, too much work, um, and they were going to release her. Fortunately, I caught up with them and intervened and I was able to adopt her and we use her for education right now. So she's really cool. But as long as we're talking about turtles, one thing with them is this is a female. She's gonna get a lot bigger than the male. You can always tell, not on all turtles, but on sliders, if you look at her claws, her front claws, they're kind of normal, right there, kind of you know, a little long, but not too bad. The male, oh, and she's very friendly, she's smiling, you see? Um, she loves everybody. But on a male, those claws would be crazy, crazy long, like Freddy Krueger. Um, and they're not used for stabbing or slashing, like Freddy Krueger, but they're really long. And what it is, is they use those claws to attract a mate. So you know some birds, the males have the bright, bright plumage to kind of like, you know, hey, how you doing to the ladies? The male uh, slider will go up to the female and do this little dance in the water in front of her with his claws, and that will hopefully attract her to him so that they can be a little cute turtle couple. So these guys are really cool, they're really neat, but this particular species needs to stay in the wild where it comes from or in the pet shops where people are buying them from. Um, they're great pets as long as you're gonna, uh, willing to commit the time and the effort to them, but they do not belong in the wild in this area, unfortunately, so make sure you do not uh, release them. Hey 
Hey Crystal, what do you think if I grew my fingernails really, really long to pick up ladies? All right, so we were cruising around looking for some cool plants and animals to check out, and we found one. So found this frog right here by the shoreline. He's absolutely adorable uh, and a little, little jumpy, but pretty friendly. Um, these guys are really, really cool. Now, he's an amphibian, right? Amphibians are so important to the environment. They're what we call an indicator species. And that basically means that if there's anything wrong in the environment, unfortunately, these guys are the first ones to suffer. So amphibians are really cool. Their skin is kind of porous, which means it's like a sponge, so they can soak up anything around them. So when they're in the water a lot, they're soaking up, staying hydrated, that kind of thing. But if I had any kind of chemicals on my skin or anything like that, he'd soak them up too. I made sure to wet my hands with lake water before I picked them up. That also means though, in the environment, if there's pollutants or whatnot, these guys, frogs, toads, salamanders can absorb them and that will poison them. And if we have a die off of amphibians in the environment, there's something wrong. That's kind of how it's indicated, hence the indicator species thing, so that we know that there's a problem, okay? So these guys are really cool. They've been around a long time. They're completely insectivorous. They love to bounce around and eat all kinds of fun bugs and uh, anything that kind of moves and they can get down their throat. This guy got a little bit bigger, but uh, he's not going to be a huge frog like a bullfrog. They're a really, really cool animal. Um, they're semi-aquatic, you know, little, mostly, mostly land and water. And um, we're going to let him go now that he came to visit with us. One thing I do want to hit on while we're out here is one of my favorite subjects, and I know one of yours, snakes. So we have a lot of different kinds of snakes out in the area, especially along the waterways. And a big uh, misconception that people have is that we've got cottonmouths. A lot of people call them water moccasins. We don't have any of those in this area, but we do have a lot of water snakes. Now water snakes look very similar to cottonmouths. They're kind of heavy bodied, kind of have a bit of a diamond shaped head, bad temper, but you know what? They're not venomous. They're not going to hurt anybody. They might poop on you, but they're not venomous. So long run, aside from the insult, you're perfectly fine. But a lot of people will get scared, might hurt them, be in their fear, that kind of thing. But they're a really important part of the environment and we want to definitely kind of coexist with them. So just to show you guys how non-dangerous water snakes are, I brought one to visit with you. Now, just as a warning, I know some people don't like snakes as much as I do, but this is a harmless snake, not gonna hurt you, okay? But just wanna let you know, it's a bit on the large side, might be a little scary to some people, so just brace yourselves for this, this behemoth that I, that I brought with me, okay? I know, terrifying, right? I'm scared out of my wits. So this is a baby northern water snake, absolutely harmless, a little bit of a bad temper. Hi, little buddy, okay? Now I'm kind of hanging on to them. He's got really good coloration. Now what these guys will do for defense, they can bite, okay? Non-venomous. This one at this point can't even break the skin. They are, they'll eat fish, little frogs, that kind of thing. Pretty harmless. And if you see a little bit of white on my fingers, they will, uh, they will let their bowels loose to let you know that they're unhappy with you and leave them alone. But really a really cool snake, really, really good part of the environment. Sorry. My pal. Yeah, definitely not a cotton mouth, definitely not something you want to be afraid of. They, you'll see them along the waterways, just kind of uh, leave them alone and they'll leave you alone. So we're out here just kind of checking out one of the little islands in the middle of the lake. It's really, really cool. There's a lot of vegetation um, during the year. Uh, various species of birds will nest here. It's really, really neat, good little ecosystem. Um, we're cruising ashore looking for turtles, water snakes, or anything that might be cool to, uh, to talk about and kind of uh, show, show you guys. Okay, so really, really cool find here. This is a common snapping turtle. 
I mean common nicely. That's just what they're called, not an insult. So she is one of the top predators in this area. She's very, very cool. She's not full size. These guys will actually get about 50 to 60 pounds and about as big around as a garbage can lid. Um, she's extra cuddly and friendly. You can see that. She obviously loves Italians because she's smiling. Okay. These guys are really, really neat. So now obviously you can see uh, on this gal, but no turtle or tortoise has any teeth. They've got a sharp beak. And if you look at that beak, you can kind of tell what they eat. So a tortoise would have kind of a straight, dull beak. They're kind of planting, you know, plant eaters generally. They're more herbivores. This girl's obviously carnivore. She's got this razor sharp beak and those little prongs on the top and the bottom. Now those prongs help to uh, slice through the flesh of her prey, which would be fish, frogs, snakes, big ones will even eat ducks. They're very, very cool. They're obviously an aquatic turtle. You can tell she's got those nice webbed feet and a nice flat shell for going through the water. Okay. Now this girl is really, really cool. Now she's an aquatic turtle. She's a hunter. But the thing is, she's not the vet, this is the fastest swimmer. Okay, no disrespect. So what she does, she camouflages, she's a bit of an ambush predator. So if you look at her, she kind of would blend into the bottom of a lake or a pond, you know, kind of like where we're in the area now. And what'll happen is she'll go up to the top. She'll take a really deep, deep breath of air. Okay, now that breath, and you guys could probably hold your breath for 15 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, okay? She can hold her breath for over an hour. That's like two TV programs back to back with no bathroom breaks, all right? So she'll take a deep breath of air, she'll go down to the bottom, kind of wiggle her bum into the mud so you can't see her, and she won't move, okay? And eventually something will swim by, a fish, a frog, something like that will come right by and that long neck will shoot out and it will grab it and pull it back in. Now that neck is really, really long, okay? You see I'm holding her by the very back of the shell? It's the only place she can't reach me. If I hold her by the sides, the top, the bottom, she can reach that long neck out and basically bite me. At which point, you know, our viewer ratings will go up, but then, you know, my boss will yell at me for having to have to go to, you know, uh, workers comp. So the thing is, she's really cool. And the fun thing is these guys are really, really aggressive, obviously, okay? And the thing with that is, um, they're really aggressive for a reason. Not all turtles are aggressive, okay? If you look at her, see that bottom shell? It's called a plastron. So the top shell is called a carapace. The bottom shell is called a plastron. Her plastron's a lot smaller than other turtles, okay? It gives her greater mobility. She can move a lot around a lot more. She can move do things that other turtles can't. But because of that reduced shell, if you look at it, she's kind of hanging all out, okay? Because she's hanging all out, other predators would love to eat her. Look, tastes like chicken, yum, yum, yum. She would be a very convenient meal. If you look at her, you know, she can come in her own bowl practically, all right? So the thing is, with that aggression, everybody leaves her alone, especially when she's larger. So since so she can't get into her shell to hide like, an, like another turtle, she goes on the offensive route, okay? So she's real, real cool, real tough animal. If you look at her, she had all these little, uh, and no one to, yep, we're good. Don't worry. Um, I know you guys are scared for me. I appreciate that but she's got all these little um, kind of skin bits all over her. It basically breaks up her outline. She looks like a little dinosaur. She's really cool. These guys have been around for a long, long time. They're very neat, neat turtles. Now, a lot of people think that they're called alligator turtles and whatnot. There are two types of snapping turtles. There's the common snapping turtle, which we have here, and the alligator snapping turtle. Those guys only live a little bit further, uh, a little further west and a little further south. So we only have regular snapping turtles here like this gal, but she's really, really cool. What a great, great find, and uh, I'm glad I can get a chance to show her to you. So everybody come in for a big hug and uh, I'm going to put it back now. Hope you guys had a great time today. I know I did. We learned a little bit about water safety. We learned about some of the things that live in the lake and we learned about some of the recreational opportunities you can do at the lake. So please go out, enjoy yourself, have some fun in the sun and join us next time on EcoVenture GSO.